Okay, recording has started. Um, and so what, uh, where we're at right now with the ITCM, and I'm just gonna pull up our JIRA log here on it. We are still in, um, the, the last release we had was a beta version, so 0.6. Um, and so it, we've been releasing betas of um, the ITCM. Um, our first um, non-beta version is gonna be obviously 1.0. Um, and so right now we just have um, currently one thing scheduled on that. Obviously, you know, with feedback from you guys doing test imports and stuff like that, um, and just going in and, you know, playing around with it, um, you know, we may be adding issues on for the 1.0 release. But right now, um, the biggest thing that we have, or the only thing really that we have for the 1.0 is right now we're missing the combined federal and state flag. Remember TR 1099, um, there was a prompt asking you if they're approved for combined federal state reporting. And so we don't have that on the ITCM yet. Um, so obviously we need to get that on there before we can do any test submissions. So that is, I think the next thing that we're gonna be working on is to get that done. Um, so this is just, you know, some of the other um, issues that are out there, backend stuff that, you know, over my head um, that they're going to do. I know they're, they're looking possibly into like a reporting engine as well in there. Um, and so, you know, when I, Think of the ITC management application. It's big improvement from doing the append process in uh, the VMS side, but it's also basic and kind of reminds me of Emus FFE, if you will, um, that you know we don't have all the bells and whistles that we have with you know USAS and payroll because this is an um, application for ITCs that gets you what you need to accomplish in order to get those files merged together in the proper format for um, submission to those reporting agencies. Um, and so, you know, like, you know, the reporting tool, we don't have like a report per se that you can run. We've got spreadsheets that you can download and look at. Um, but so we just don't have all of that extra stuff that we have in the other applications. And um, like I said, you know, we have, a handful of ITCs that are going to be using this too. So, um, so that's kind of where we're at right now uh, with the application. Now, we sent something back in October, Mark did, um, with um, the information, sent it to the SSDT notices and how to set up the ITC management. I believe it was back, I've got it listed here, on October 14th or something like that. Um, yes, it was October 14th when he sent out, um, he called it early access to the ITCM is now available. And so in there, um, he had a link to the ITCM installation guide, which is on our wiki. So you can just do a search on that on our wiki as well. And for those that are hosting locally, um, not through the uh, management council, you'll be using that installation guide to go through the steps on how to install and configure ITCM. Now, for those of you that are um, hosting with the Management Council, Chad Carson sent out a message to the ITCs back on November 18th and now is announcing a new catalog item that's out there in VRA uh, where you can go in and create your own test um, ITC uh, um, instance or production instance. So there is an ITC management catalog item out there that you can go out there and, uh, like I said, set up um, a test instance or an actual production instance of the ITCM application with them. So that's where that, um, um, that's how, you know, basically how you can get started in it. If you guys, you guys are probably already aware of that and have already created some type of test instance, that's what I have on the screen right now is just a basic test instance um, of the application. Um, it, it's, I, I'm liking the way it looks. And, you know, it kind of, you know, like I said, it's basic, like in this FFE, but it also kind of reminds me of inventory. 
um, and just how you can move around here. Um, so it's in that type of framework. So, um, and also you have an option to change the colors on here, uh, which is kind of cool. Um, there is, before we get started here, there is an option down here for a user profile. And in that user profile, I can change the password or when I click on the user profile, I can change my display mode from white to dark. So, um, so I, I, I think it's dark by default. And so when we did the documentation and things like that, we also left it in the dark um, screen. I, I think that's easier to see and stuff, but uh, if you prefer light, you can change that. So that's where that's at. Um, so going back to the home screen, and like I said, they've been doing, you know, releasing this, updating things, um, making changes. So we get feedback from you guys as well. Um, you know, we'll be making more changes in here. Our user documentation is out there. And if you just do a search on ITCM uh, management, um, you'll get to the documentation link on our wiki. And so, um, so we will be going through the different options in here. So that's what you're going to be seeing. Um, and so I'm not going to go in order of how it's listed. I'm going to go in order that makes sense to us. Um, and so the first thing that uh, up here, this right. so basically what we're going to start out with is going in and creating the user accounts, setting up, um, I'll talk about the monitor a little bit, um, setting up the organization, which is the ICC information, um, setting up our districts, and then um, the 1099 merge, and then Lori uh, and I is gonna be going through the ODJFS and the W2 merge options. Um, so that will complete our training for today. So if I go back to the home screen here, like I said, I'm gonna to go to users first. Now, before we get started here, do you guys have any questions about setup or anything about creating an, an instance or anything like that? Okay, like I said, you know, Mark sent out that message in October. Um, with the steps for those that are going to do this locally, and then chancing out that message in November with the uh, VRA option out there for those that are hosting with the Management Council. So that will get you started. Okay, so in users here, I have um, uh, I have a couple uh, accounts already set up. Obviously, the admin account is set up. And then I also created an extra account. Now, uh, for those of you obviously that are going to be running this and doing this um, on behalf of your districts, I would personally be creating accounts for the ITC staff um, and not just use the admin account, kind of like how we use payroll and USAS. Um, that way it does show you know, anything that is done underneath that particular user account. Um, you would give yourself the admin role for that, um, there are two different roles. Um, and so there's an admin role, and then there is a uh, role underscore admin, and then there's a role underscore user. And the only difference between the two is that the user role um, grant, so you're basically granted the same access um, with the exception of the user role. The actual role underscore user is not able to go and include other user where role underscore admin allows everything. So it'll allow them to create the user accounts and everything else. The role underscore user allows them to do everything but create user accounts. Um, so those are the two roles. So um, you'll notice here on the screen, um, down here underneath new items is where I'm actually going in and creating a new user account. So I'm just gonna click on it so you can see it. And so here is the information um, that is entered in. Everything with a little blue dot next to it is a required field. So you have to put something in that field. Um, but you can see here um, all the information that's available in here. Uh, Two-factor authentication, I believe with Chad, when he put out that message, I think he said he may be still working on that. 
that was in November. So he may have all of that already done by now. Um, but um, yeah, so in here you can enter in the uh, name of the user. So the ITC staff member, um, their actual username that's gonna be used, um, email address, and the actual role. And these are the two roles I was talking about. So like I said, if the ITC staff um, needs to have access to obviously everything in here, you can grant the role underscore admin and they'll have access to all the options. In here. And that's how I'm going to be um, using this today. I've logged in as admin and um, I'm, I've got the actual admin role. So you'll be able to see all the different options in here. So that is basically the user account, very similar to what you see in use and payroll. So uh, nothing really different and inventory. So same type of stuff, um, but that will allow you to go in and get those accounts created for the ITC staff that will be using it. Okay. Um, the next uh, step or option I wanna talk about is monitor. They just added this. Um, and from what I'm seeing here, because um, I really haven't had a bunch of a chance to look at it yet, it looks like it's the same um, option that we have out there underneath in USAS and payroll. Uh, we have the system uh, monitor. There is a um, security tab on those, and it kind of keeps track of authentication um, events. And so I think what it's doing right now is it's going in and, oh, got people trying to go in here. <laughs> um, it, it allows you to go in here and actually, um, it tracks the login uh, failures um, and also like password changes and things like that. So that's what I'm seeing so far right now with this. Um, and so that's basically what that's tracking. The next option, that's all right, Brianne. <laughs> Oops, that's okay. Um, it doesn't hurt. It's just a test instance of mine, so you're okay with that. Um, the next thing that I want to talk about is the organization. So the organization is going to be the ITC information. So this is a sample ITC I set up, if you will, um, and it's got um, your name and address information that's going to be um, part of you know, what's going to be located on those files that will be submitted. Um, so we've got um, the address. Here's all the address information section. And then there is a W2 submitter configuration section right here. Um, and so we're putting in you know, our contact information. So this is for the W2 portion, like 1099 merge, you'll be entering that stuff in there. Um, so all of that's in here. If the submitter address is the same as the company address, um, you can check mark this. I think it's check marked by default. Um, and um, you'll be plugging in the company address information. If it is different for some reason, um, then you can uncheck that and it will give you the options to enter in submitter address information separately. Um, I think most of you are probably going to be doing, it's gonna be one and the same. And so once you enter in all the information for the ITC, so they're the organization, um, and you click on save, it's not going to go to a grid or anything. This window just stays as is. So if you're thinking, wait a minute, did it save anything? It did. I click on save, it tells me organization stored. So I get a little update message, um, but it doesn't change the screen at all. Um, so if I need to go back in and make a slight change, I can and click on save again, um, and then we'll update uh, the changes that I made. So that's basically what the organization does. And all of this, going back to the documentation, is all listed in the documentation. And we go into detail um, regarding you know, what you're seeing on the screens and any other pertinent information that you need. So obviously, we've got a little note here with the organization that this record must be created before you're using any of the merge options because it's going to be pulling uh, the submitter's information on there as well. So that stuff needs to be in it. 
Any questions about the organization at all? No, it's yeah, like I say, it's pretty basic. So we're going to be going through this stuff pretty quickly. We went through a lot of great user accounts. We talked about the monitor. Um, we went through organization. And now we'll get into the nitty gritty of this. And the first thing we're going to talk about is the actual districts. Go back to the districts tab here. And so what I've done is um, created some districts and you can either create them individually or you can mass load districts. And so we have the specifications on how to mass import them in the documentation. But um, as you can see, way down at the bottom, there's a new item option. So if I want to enter them in individually, um, I have the districts option highlighted. I click on new items and it's going to bring up the information regarding um, that district. So these would be all of the districts at your ITC that you are submitting on behalf of them. Um, 1099 or the GFS W2. Um, and so you'll notice again, the little blue dots, those are the required fields. Um, so um, this is everything that you can put in here. And once you click on save then, um, it'll pull it into the grid. And you can see over here too, um, we also have um, an option where you can go back in and edit. So um, you'll see this several times throughout the application. So if I did make a mistake, on Maple View, and I needed to go back in. I could go back in and edit. Maybe I had something incorrect with their address information. So I'm going in and save it then. If I want to delete it all together and start over, there is a delete option you're going to see down here. And it is in red, so it's kind of easy to uh, see here. And you can delete to that district entirely um, and re edit if you need to. So that's basically um, very simple and how to create or add a district manually. Um, you can also mass load districts. So if you have a spreadsheet of your district's information, um, you can take that spreadsheet and mass import that in. Now, let me show you um, the file specs for that. I'm gonna go into our district's information in our chapter or in our documentation. And down here is the information on how, on how to mass import districts. And you'll see down here um, that we do have a template spreadsheet that you can download and use and enter in your district information. It has all of the fields that you need. Um, and so we just have some notes here regarding this. There's no order of the fields. Um, so you can put them in any order on the spreadsheet and that's okay. Also, when it comes to some of these, like the formatting of like the phone number, um, if you put hyphens in, uh, that's fine. Uh, what's going to happen is those will be removed um, in order to be in the proper format for submitting to the reporting agency. So you can put um, you know, hyphens or whatever in there, um, and all of those extra characters will be removed so it's formatted correctly. And so there's all that information. Um, and so when you, like I said, we have the, the spreadsheet here. And once you have that spreadsheet created, then um, what you're going to do is basically you're going to upload that spreadsheet in here, click on import records, and then you go back to your district's grid and all of those will be imported. In. And what I would do is just, you know, go in and kind of take a look at some of them, make sure that things look good after, if you are planning on doing a mass import. Um, and then if you know you do have a couple that didn't import right or you just didn't have all the information in there to begin with on the spreadsheet, you could delete those and then just enter those in name just to get everybody in. So two different ways to import your districts. And once these are in here, they're in here for good. So you know you're thinking next year, no problem, they're already in here. Um, so if for some reason, one of our districts is no longer with us. We can delete them. If we have a new district, we can add them. Um, so this is a working grid and it doesn't get cleared out or anything like that. It stays in here. 
Um, so that's basically the district's option. And so um, any questions so far with those basic setup options we talked about? Okay, uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna move on to uh, the merge options now. And I'm gonna cover the 1099 merge. And then like I said, we're gonna be covering payroll related merges. So, um, 1099 merge, um, we've got three different options within 1099 merge, uh, district entry, the actual merge option, and the results from the merge. So I kind of call like the 1099 uh, district entry is basically um, going in and um, setting up your districts uh, and importing in their uh, tape files things like that. So that's basically that step. So, you know, that's where, you know, the district is running um, the 1099 extract information from uh, USASR, and they're using the IRS format option. And it's going to create that tape file. And I'm assuming you guys already have something set up with your districts and how they get you that tape file um, in order for it to be, you know, submitted to the IRS. So whatever kind of, whatever you have worked out with your districts and how to do that, um, then what you're gonna do is you're taking that tape file and you're going to be uploading it into here. And so I kind of wanna show you uh, how you go about doing that. Let me get to that here. All right, spin around a little bit here. And so I do have an example of one right now that was uploaded. So I'm in ITC. I've got Cotton Schools uh, already uploaded in here. And how I did that is I went into new item. And then from there, I went in and selected the district. So in this case, um, I'm gonna pick on another one here, Sampleville. And so these districts are coming from what I entered in the district option. So I have to select a district, so I can't create a district on the fly. It has to come from that district option. So I'll pick on Sampleville. And then the next thing it's gonna ask me for is the file type. So if Sampleville ran their 1099s for both, for the miscellaneous and the net, then I want my file type to be both as well. Um, if they bring them separately um, and they have separate files, um, I can upload two separate files for Sampleville. Um, if they aren't, they don't have any miss and all they have is net, and they just ran it for the net option, I can just select um, the net option and it will pull it in. Um, the calendar here. So obviously you notice here that is a required field. So I'm doing this for 2022. And then from here, what I'm doing is I'm going in and I need to upload that to the moving file. So this is where I'm actually going in and um, uploading that next file in. Um, I have to remember what I did here. So let me look at my... Ah, I've got Poplar. So I'm going to pick on Poplar here. And for Poplar, it is an actual NEC file. And so 2022. And so now I'm going to click on Upload. And I'm going to pull that file in. And there's my tape file that I got from the district. And then from there, um, I just go ahead and click on Save. And it pulled Poplar's file in. Now, what is really, really nice about this is that the file names are saved on the grid. Uh, because, like I said, this is a very basic program. I could have gone in, click on new, and I could have said, yeah, I'm going to pull in Poplar, and I hit miscellaneous, and I 
wasn't paying attention and I uploaded um, an actual both file um, in there, I will immediately be able to see, wait a minute, you know, my file type says miscellaneous, but my file name says both. So, you know, I, you know, I didn't have the right format in here um, and those don't jive, so something's wrong. I either have the wrong file type listed or I actually have the wrong file imported in. Um, so that's kind of a way of checking to make sure that you have the right format. Um, um, how does it know where to pull the 1099 file from? That is going to be have, have to be somewhere on your system, uh, Brenda. Um, so because if you're getting that information from your districts, they're sending you those files, you're going to be taking those and saving them somewhere on your system, and then you're going to be uploading them into here, okay, into, into the system. Um, so again, this is just a way to double check that my file type and my file name are the same. So uh, you think about all the different files that you can have in any of these merge options. It's nice to have that file name listed in here so you can double check that. And if for some reason I go in here and it's wrong, um, if I use the edit option here, um, I can only edit specific fields. So let's say, you know, I really did upload a 1099 both file for Poplar, but I had the file type as net. I can just easily change that. But um, if I really um, had just the wrong file inputted to begin with, um, maybe, you know, I selected Poplar, but I uploaded Sampleville's file. Um, the easiest way to correct all of that, you notice that I cannot go in and change the upload file, I believe is just to delete it and re-add it. So if I wanted to, I could use the delete. It asks me, are you sure you want to delete this? When I click on that, it clears that out. And then I can just start over. So that's you know, really a basic way on how to go in and upload an actual tape file. Um, if I wanted to download the file um, into, um, you notice that you know these are tape files, these aren't like spreadsheets. So if I wanted to save this file for some reason um, and download it in here, I could go in and do that and we'll save it to my uh, computer. Um, it's gonna save it in that, uh, obviously the tape format. Um, so I could do that through Notepad or Notepad++ if I wanted to. Um, so basically we have an edit option after we upload a file to possibly change any of these options here. We have the delete option within there to actually delete that row. And we have a download file that allow you to download it if you need to. So what you guys will you know, have by the time this is all said and done is a grid of all your districts coming in and data, whether it's both, miss, um, neck. So they're all gonna be listed in here. Um, so once you have everyone in here, then the next step is going to merge them all. So do you have any, before we go on to the 1099 merge, do you have any questions regarding uploading your district's 1099 tape files? Okay. So I kind of call the 1099 merge option um, is so like the 1099 entry is like the massive append <laughs> part basically where you're, you know, when you think of VMS and how you had to type in append and start adding everybody's tape files in there, making sure you have everyone correct. 
And in my case, I usually skipped or did some kind of typo and I had to re-enter the whole darn thing again. Um, the district entry was so much better um, because you're basically just going, finding those tape files that you've saved, importing them in. And then once you have them all in here, the 1099 merge then is basically doing, hitting the enter key on a pen and also doing the TR 1099 in one step is basically what this is. Um, so in here is where you're entering in um, the TR 1099 data for your ITC. So the first thing you're doing is creating the file name. So you've got all of those districts in the 1099 district entry and you're going to merge them all. You've got to give it a file name. So, and this is a file name then that will be uploaded uh, into the fire system. Um, so whatever that's going to be, I'm just going to pick 2022-1099s, and then the year, obviously, my transmitter name, and my TCC code, which you guys probably all have had for years, uh, my TIN. On something here, um, the contact and the contact phone number and the contact email. Um, here is where I was saying we're missing an important checkbox, and that's the approved for combined federal and state reporting that needs to be in here. We don't have that yet. Um, but we do have those other options. If you can recall what TR 1099 has on it, um, there is an option, which I don't know if I've ever used in all my years um, of the prior year. Um, there's also the test file, which um, we always recommend um, trying that out. Um, there is a IRS uh, fire test system. Um, and I know it's closed right now, but it's going to open back up at the beginning of January where you can go in and complete a test file. Um, so I would, I would recommend that. Go in and, and try this out, make sure that, um, do a couple sample uh, districts, generate a test file and submit it to the IRS fire test system. Um, and then the original, obviously you leave those unchecked and that's your original. Um, and it's going to go ahead and start merging all of those districts that are in the 1099 entry into one file underneath uh, 2022 1099s. So I'm gonna go ahead and click my start. And it tells me down at the bottom that the merge job scheduled successfully. So at that point then, and that's really all you're gonna see on here. You don't see anything outside of that. Um, you need to go to the 1099 merge results to take a look at what all merged together. So when I click on that, it's going to take me to my uh, merge results grid. And I will have, let's say I had 25 entries in the 1099, 1099 district entry, I have 25 districts. I merged them all using the 1099 merge now, all of those 25 districts, like I said, let's pretend I have 25 here, um, are underneath this one file. Um, <clears throat> and so here's our default grid here. And it tells me, obviously, it's not a test file. It's not one for the prior year, who it was generated by, when it was generated, my total number of districts on that. So at this point, you're like, that's great. I have 25 districts and let's say it says 25, but I'd like to see something. Um, and so, you know, with the TR-1099, you had a TR-1099 report at the end of it. So um, at this point, what we have is if you click on the edit button, it's gonna allow you to go in and take a look at what's going on with this. Um, so it kind of gives us, you know, the information that we had entered in, in the prior um, option, <clears throat> excuse me. And then it's going to list all of our districts. So if I had 25 in here, all 25 would be listed. 
with the number of records per district. And if I use my scroll bar down here, it'll allow me to scroll left to right, and then it will go in and identify the types of 1099s here and their amount. So I've got four payees, rent, I've got uh, royalty, other income, uh, medical health care, attorney gross proceeds, and my net amounts. So, and you'll notice too, down at the bottom, there's an actual um, a, a total, sorry, um, of all of the districts down here as well. Now, if I wanted to take this, like I said, we don't have a report option right now that would generate a PDF file, but we <clears throat> do have an extract results option. So if I click on that, it takes that and it will save it as um, a CSV file that I can go in and view the information from my merge. Pull that up here. <clears throat> And I can take this and expand on it. Um, uh, this is um, pretty basic with what we're seeing. It's kind of a summary of what we saw in the grid there. Um, now, if I wanted to actually look at all of the details of this um, before I exit out of here, I just want to show you one thing. It also has a delete option. So if my merge did not go well, I forgot a district or two. I could delete this entire file and it will be deleted and I can start a new merge. You know, go in and, and make any, you know, if I need to add another district in here, great, do another merge, and then I'll get a new merge results file. So that's nice too. Um, is that you know it's you miss somebody, you skip somebody, or something wasn't labeled properly, you can always just delete this file and start over. But like I said, if I wanted to go in, cancel out of here and take a look at this data as well. Um, I can go in and use the download, and this is going to be in the tape file format. So right now, this is going to give me um, all of the data on save. Hmm. This is the actual format that is the IRS specifications. So this is the file that you'll be using to download from here and upload into the IRS's fire system. I was thinking I had another option for like a TR-1099 report, but I don't know if I'm missing something. So this download put downloads all of the data into the one file, the merged file. It's, it's, it's basically your merged data. So you're basically saving it, downloading it so that you can then upload it into the fire system. That's what this option does. But if you wanna see the details, like I said, you click on edit and thought we had another option, but I guess not. Um, the extracts file will give you that information, but it doesn't provide like each like 1099 vendor in detail in here. Um, it's just, it looks like right now, it's just a summarized option. I'm going to look at that again. Maybe I missed something. <clears throat> so yeah, we just have a summary of it. The total amount of attorney gross proceeds. How much was medical and healthcare 1099 type? So it's just the totals and not so much all of the districts that are included in those totals. I don't know if the TR 1099 did that. I think that was more of a summary too. I can't remember off the top of my head. Somebody else can remember that. 
Um, but yeah, this is just more of a summary. So this is basically the replacement right now for that TR 1099 report that we had. Okay, do you guys have any questions about the 1099 process here? So, and what you'll see too, when Rory goes through the merging uh, for W2s and OUGFS, it's very similar. You got the same processes. You've got the district entry, you've got the actual merge, and then you have the merge results where you can take a look and see what all got merged together. Okay, if you guys don't have any other questions, I'm going to turn this over to Lori. So I'm gonna stop sharing and let her share. Okay, let me share my screen here. All right, are you guys seeing the ITC management screen? Yes. Okay, perfect. I'm gonna make sure I was sharing the right one. Okay, well, we're gonna switch gears and talk about the, as Michelle said, um, the last two options to talk about um, within the ITCM are the ODJFS merge option and then the W2 merge option. So again, this, you know, for those that joined a little late, um, this is just for those ITCs that are going to be continuing to submit their district's information on, you know, their behalf. So on a quarterly basis, um, you'll use then the ODJFS merge option. Um, again, as Michelle mentioned, these two um, payroll options look very, very similar to the 1099 option. So across the top, you'll see three different um, selections um, to choose from the ODJFS district entry, the ODJFS merge option, and then the ODJFS merge results option. So you can see, you know, it's a nice pretty grid, um, you know, that includes, you know, the name of the district, the IRN, the quarter, um, the calendar year, and then that nice handy file name. Um, so you're going to, you know, once the districts have created their um, ODJFS file, um, each ITC probably has, you probably have your own means to for them to get that file to you. And then once you have that file or all your district's files, you know, it probably would be, you might save them in, you know, a special folder. Um, and then those need to be then transferred from your computer and uploaded into this program. Um, so that's what this step does. So you have all of your district's files. Now we need to get them into the um, ODJFS district entry screen. So <clears throat> to add a new file, you're gonna click on the new item. And then you're gonna select then that specific district. So let's just pick one here. Um, we're gonna select the quarter um, that we're uploading the file for, and then also the calendar year. So there's two ways then to upload or, or get this file into um, the ITCM um, system. And one is to you know, browse and find that file or you can also drag and drop. So I think that's super convenient. You know, you, you have the file, you can just drag it and drop it here, or we can click the upload ODJFS. I have, like I mentioned, all of my, my um, files in one folder. Um, so I would just simply pick that specific district's file, and then I can click save, and that then will be added to um, the grid that we see behind us. I did want to point out that if you would happen to upload um, a file that's not an ODJFS file, because we all know that you know we're human and that's going to happen. Um, if I go to upload something that's not in 
ODGFS format, say I upload a Rita file or something else, and I click save, it's not going to let me upload that file because it's not in the right format. So it's going to be caught, you know, right away when you go to um, upload that district's information. Okay, so as you're um, adding, you know, each district's file, you're going to then see that listed um, on this grid. So I think, you know, these grids can be super helpful because use the filtering options. So, you know, you have your list of districts, you, you know, you should have, you know, 20 fourth quarter files, um, you know, filter this grid by fourth quarter, and then you can easily count, you know, in the grid and know that, yep, I have, you know, all 20 that I need and I'm good to go. Okay, so there are two options on the grid. Um, Again, this looks very, it's exactly the same as the 1099 option. When I click on the edit, um, that brings up then that specific files information. And as Michelle mentioned before, you know, I can't go in and, and change the file at all. I would have to delete that, this file, and then, you know, upload that district's information again. But maybe I have the wrong you know, district associated with the file or the wrong quarter, the wrong year, I can change that by clicking the edit option. And again, this is, you know, the way that you would permanently remove um, a file from the grid. If I needed to download this file for whatever reason, um, the download option will provide me um, the ability to, you know, download this to my computer. And again, this is just this district's file. So, you know, I don't know how important that's going to be unless you need to look at that specific district's file for some reason. But, you know, you do have the means to do that. So once you have all of your districts, you know, the proper quarter, the proper calendar year, all of their um, the, every district that you're wanting to submit for, all of their files in this grid, then we're going to go to the next option, the ODJFS merge option. And this is going to, you know, as Michelle mentioned, you know, instead of appending the files and going through that painful process, this is going to do that, merge all these files together into one file um, in just, you know, a couple clicks. So we're going to assure that our year, our calendar year, um, 2022, we're going to select the proper quarter um, from the dropdown. And then it's going to ask you for, you know, a, a transmitter title. I'm just going to put in. And then it's going to ask you for a transmitter email a transmitter phone number, and then an extension if that applies. And when I click Start ODJFS Merge, must have not clicked it, sorry. You can see in the lower left-hand corner then, you get a message that says ODJFS um, Merge Successful. And again, that's going to be the only message you're going to see on this screen. Um, if I would click it again, there's no harm done. Um, I'm going to go then after that you see that successful message appear, I'm going to go to ODJFS merge results. And I can then see that that merge file that I just created. Um, along with all the other files that I've created in the past. So again, really no harm done if you've if you click that in error, you know, multiple times, you're going to see those files listed here, and then you have the means to, you know, delete those or, or get rid of them if, if they were created in error. So from, you know, within the ODGFS merge results option, again, you can see the grid. We can filter the grid then by quarter, by calendar year, um, you know, created by, and so forth. Um, it's nice because it also gives me a total number of districts that are included within that merged file. So this is, again, a good way to, 
you know, double and triple check that, yes, I have the right number of districts included in the file before I go any farther. So from here, you have two options. You have the edit option, and then we have the download option. So this is that big file that contains all of our districts. I'm gonna click the edit option, and it just provides me more details of what's contained in that merged file. So again, the, the date created, the time, the username, the calendar year, the quarter, you know, the, the transmitter title, email, phone number, extension that we entered in the merge um, option. And then it's going to give me by district then um, account, an employee account and some fee and the wages paid, the total amount um, included in that file. It gives me a total at the bottom then of the number of districts, the number of employees, and the total of all of those districts wages paid, um, you know, the grand total basically. I can extract those results into a spreadsheet. Um, so probably this is something that you're, you'll want to do just as confirmation. Um, as Michelle mentioned, we're not quite to the point of having a pretty like PDF report yet. So my suggestion would be to go ahead and, um, you know, extract these results into um, an into Excel. And then it's going to give you then the option to print something as your confirmation as to what was included in that file. So it gives you a total by district then of the information that was included in that file that's going to be submitted. I did happen to think, and this is just a personal preference, it might be helpful even to like print this screen. Um, you know, I'm, I'm kind of a over the top kind of, you know, cover myself kind of person. So this might um, be helpful too if you just print this screen and then print your um, extract the results into um, Excel. That's kind of, you know, your audit trail, so to speak, um, and proof of what was um, contained within that file. Again, if this is a file that was created in error or something needs to be changed and you want to start over, you have the ability to delete um, that merged file here. So I'm just going to cancel and get out of it. And then once we've verified that all the information is correct, I'm good to go, then I'm going to be able to use the download option and I'm going to download this file that's going to be stored somewhere on my computer. And then this is the file then that I would upload to um, the source, the, the new, um, the ODJFS website. Okay, looks like we do have, why does the grid show one district, but the summary has two districts? Why does the summary show? Are we talking about this report here? So, okay, um, so I had two files, I had two districts, I'm sorry, within that merged file. Why does the grid show one? Let me go back to the grid, sorry. Um, probably because I did a poor example of, I think it's, they're the same district. So let me, Let's try this again. Yeah, I think they're the same. They're the same district. So it's one district, but two records. So let me do a better job of showing you. What needs to happen? No, it doesn't. I'm sorry. Those are two. Okay, I bet you I know what I did. So for ease of the demonstra demonstrating, I actually just used the same district. So I had a demo district and I created um, an ODJFS file out of that same district twice. 
and I just uploaded that same file into two different districts just because we don't have a lot of test instances to use. So it's the same information, the same file that I uploaded for district one and district two. So the information is the same. So I apologize, it's probably very confusing. When you upload each individual district's file, it's gonna be a different set of information and it will properly show the number of districts and not what you um, saw here. So I apologize that, that for that, that was confusing. I just used the same file and uploaded that to each of my districts, you know, district one and district two, I used the same file. So I apologize that that was probably confusing. Yours should show the correct number because you're uploading a new file, a different file for each district. Make sense? Okay, perfect. Thanks for catching that. All right, are there any other questions um, regarding the ODJFS merge? Pretty self-explanatory, um, you know, pretty user-friendly, um, just kind of missing, you know, maybe that report piece. So I would recommend, you know, printing the screen, printing that, um, those results, and then keeping that for your records. Okay, don't think there's any questions. I'm gonna move on to the W2 merge option. Very, very similar, um, except for we have a few other options to choose from because you're going to be um, submitting, you know, files to different entities, right? So we do have um, the ability to upload the files to the federal, um, the different states, RITA and CCA, okay? So again, when you're, once you've uploaded, the district's files, you're going to be able to see those in this nice pretty grid. So again, districts are creating these files. Um, you have a means, you know, internally for them to get that file to you. Um, and I'm assuming that there's some kind of like naming convention that you might be doing on your end because, you know, when the system creates the files, everybody's federal file, everybody's read a file, they're all going to be named the same thing. So when they come to you, you have to have a way to know this file belongs to district one, this file belongs to district two, and so forth. So I'm assuming you're doing some kind of renaming so that that you can easily identify, um, you know, district, this file belongs to this district. OK, so again, what's super nice is that file name then is listed in this grid. So when you have what you think are all 20 of your district's federal files, I would filter this grid by federal and then know I have all 20 of my federal files for all of my districts. And those are all the right file name. But oops, I accidentally uploaded the wrong file for this district's federal um, submission. So I think this is a super easy way for you to catch those errors. Um, unlike the ODJFS upload, if I upload a file with say the federal type, but it's a CCA um, file, it's not gonna flag an error. So you do have to be particularly careful, and this is a very easy way for you to check that I have uploaded 20 federal files and they're all the right file to begin with, okay? So let's, you know, these are all the files that we have already created. Nice, pretty grid for you to look at. Um, we're gonna then go click on new item and this allows you then to continue to upload any of those files that aren't already um, listed in the grid. So I, from the drop down, can select my district. Here's where you're gonna select the submission type. 
So, you know, if it's easiest to go through and we're going to create our federal file, I'm going to upload all of my district's federal files. You know, that to me makes most sense. Doesn't have to be that way. Um, we're going to click the, the year, the calendar year. And then again, you have the ability to drag and drop or browse and find that file. I'm going to click save and then that's going to then um, add that federal file for that district to that to this grid. Okay. Um, if I made a mistake, you can see here, um, I sort of did this on purpose so we can see that, you know, this is not correct. I have a federal um, file type with the, a CCA file attached to it. Um, from the grid, you have, again, the ability to edit um, or download. So I'm going to click the edit option, and this would allow me then to change that submission type to the, the proper CCA submission um, type, or if it really should have been federal um, and I need to just change the, the file that's attached to this type, then I would delete and then you know create a new item and, and start over. Okay. If I need to, again, you know, completely remove this line from the grid, from the edit option, I can then select delete and that will permanently remove this line or this file from the grid altogether. Okay. Um, the other option then is to download this, you know, specific file. Again, this is just, you know, District 1's federal file. So if you needed to look at that for whatever reason, um, maybe make sure it, it truly is the right file. Um, you do have the ability to download the individual files um, using the download option from the district entry screen. All right. So once you have, again, you know, all of your federal, all of your state, all of your you know, all the various types for every district that you're going to be submitting for, then we're going to move to the W-2 merge option. So this is um, just kind of very basic information, just like you saw on the ODJFS merge option, um, allows you to enter the calendar year. Here's where we're going to um, choose from the drop down the type of submission that we're creating. So this is going to be very important to know what format the file needs to be created in. So if I'm creating my federal file, obviously I'm choosing federal, state, the various other states, RITA or CCA. Okay, so I'm gonna just, as our example, use the federal option. Um, the prepare, or code, just like you know, you had to enter in W two um, tape. Um, it's you know the self prepared is probably the option you're selecting. The um, federal ID number. This is going to populate then from the organization. So Michelle talked about that earlier. If there's an additional federal ID number, um, there's an a place to to place that as well. And then you do have to enter the state ID number. And then there's an option to enter your submitter user ID. So this is when you registered with, you know, that specific um, entity, what's your user ID with that entity? I do, you know, advise you just to double check, open these um, employer information and the contact information. Open these, you know, double and triple check them one more time um, because this does get included in the, the submission file. Um, but again, this is getting pulled right from the organization record. So um, just double and triple check it one more time and make sure everything's accurate. If you do find an error, you know, go to that organization record and, and change it so that, you know, you don't have to keep changing it each time you create your submission file. It should be accurate, but I would just advise to create it or check it one more time. Um, and then you'll go ahead and you'll click, you know, start merge.
what am I? Oh, I have to some. Sorry, I have to enter my user ID. I should get a message that says W two jobs successfully scheduled successfully. I'm going to then go to W two merge results, and here's then those submission files. You know, all of those files combine into one file that I've created. So I can see here the type of file that was created, the year, um, if it was a resubmission, and we'll I'll come back to that in just a second, who generated the file, the date and the time that it was generated, and then the total number of districts included in that submission file. So from the W2 or within the W2 merge results option, if I click the edit option, I get that, um, you know, that brings up a pop-up window and it provides me more details then of what's contained within that um, merged file, um, just like we looked at with the ODJFS file. So you can see down below, it gives me information about each district, the number of records that were included, the wages, the federal tax. And you'll notice um, in this merge results option, I have the ability to scroll. So there's more information to the right um, regarding your FICA taxes and wages, Medicare WAC um, taxes and wages, and then those dependent care benefits. Okay, so you can scroll left to right here and it's gonna give you more information than what you see on your screen. And then, you know, likewise, there's a grand total um, at the bottom. I can extract this then, just like I could with ODJFS into um, a spreadsheet. And again, this is probably something that I would keep, you know, a copy of so that you know exactly what was contained within that um, file that was submitted. Okay. All right, let me get out of this. Again, you know, maybe print this screen so you have, um, you know, something else um, for your, for auditing purposes. I'm gonna cancel out of this screen. So then, you know, once everything looks good, you have the proper number of districts, um, you know, the right file type, all that, you know, stuff has been double checked we're going to click the download option. And this is going to create that W2 MAST file. And then this would be the file then that you're gonna upload then to the Social Security Administration in this, in this case. You would then repeat this process for all of the various other entities that you're submitting um, information for. So RITA, CCA, Ohio, you know, any other states that apply. Okay. I'm going to go back, the W-2 merge option. So say, um, you know, you submitted the file and now you've received a letter from, um, you know, the entity saying that something was wrong with the file and you need to resubmit for some reason. Um, you'll basically, you know, need to figure out obviously what, what went wrong. Um, and then start the process over. But when you go to the W-2 merge and, and you, you know, put in up basically all like the header information, you'll wanna check this box that says resubmission. And that will allow you um, to enter the wage file identif identifier, excuse me, that should be provided in like the letter that you would have received um, that tells you that you have to resubmit, okay? So that's really the only difference there. And then that file gets flagged accordingly, um, saying that it's being resubmitted. Okay. By default, this is not checked. So you won't have to worry about checking it or unchecking it. Um, just, you know, make sure you check it if you do need to resubmit for whatever reason. And one thing I, I kind of skipped over in the whole process is, you know, once you have the file created, I would suggest running it through AccuWage. Um, hopefully you're all familiar with doing that. 
um, before you actually upload it to uh, the entity itself. Um, so create that file, download the file, and then go ahead and um, you know run that file like through AccuAge like you always have, and that should catch any any errors prior to you actually submitting, you know, uploading that file and, and it coming back with errors for whatever reason. Okay. Are there any questions? Wait, Lori, Nancy has a question oh, in the chat. I'm sorry. Let's okay. see here. Is there a difference between And that's a good question because I know we have always used self-prepared. So um, I will have to find out because I honestly don't know what service, what the difference is between service bureau and we've always, can anybody else, any other ITC speak up? Have you guys always used self-prepared as well? I've always used self-prepared. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, we always have. That's the only option I'm. Um, but I will find out and we'll we'll clarify that. Obviously, if you've used it in the past and it's worked, I, I guess there's not any problems with it. But I don't know what service bureau, what that actually means. But we'll find out and follow up. Good question. Um. Also, I don't remember needing the state ID. So I feel like the state ID is required because you're submitting to those various states. So I'm not sure that it's actually used on like the federal um, file, even though you have to enter it, but you are gonna have a state ID associated with each of those states that you're filing for. So, you know, Ohio, you know, Pennsylvania, West Virginia. Um, but I do know you can't leave this blank, um, even though it doesn't appear, you know, with the star behind it. If I go to, well, unless something has changed, let me try it before I, okay, I lied. And I know it was required and maybe they removed it. Um, so I apologize because it did, it did create my file without needing that. Um, but you will want to make sure that you enter that um, when maybe let me go change it to the state and see if it requires it then. And I don't have any. OK, so they must have changed that. And I apologize for misstating that um, the state ID. It doesn't appear that this is required anymore. Um, so you can leave that blank. Um, but you do want to make sure that you entered that for the states that you're submitting. Um, I would assume that you each have your own state ID to, to submit um, with those different state entities. And then obviously you have to enter your um, user ID. Okay. I have a question. Can you hear me okay? This is Jill with HTC. Yes, I can, Jill. Um, normally what we do is um, for Rita, for Indiana, Kentucky, and for the city tax files, even if someone's already on US PSR, is we do individual files. So what I normally would do is the district would give me the Rita file. And then I would run W2 tape and um, the only district that would be in that particular file is the one district. And I would create it, run it through the test program, help them correct any errors and give them the file back. The same with the city. So I wouldn't be actually appending a bunch of districts into one file. I would be doing individual files, one per district. And the same with like the city taxes, they just give me their city tax file. I would run W2 tape, use the federal option, create the city file, you know, put the, you know, the headers and the trailers on it and then run it through the test program. And then normally I, a lot of the cities want the files on CD still. 
then I would put it on a CD for them. So I, so, what yes. do we do in those kind of cases where we don't, where it's only one district and we don't have to merge, but we might have 15 different individual districts so, that need 15 different individual files? So I think you can still, you should be able just to use this, um, Jill. And if that's the way that you're going to continue to submit, it's if you merge, it's just going to, um, well, I think we're going to have to do a little manipulating now that I think about it. You're going to only be able to have one file in this grid here if you're going to merge them individually. I mean, it's going to let you do the process with only one mm -hmm. file, but you're going to have to avoid having every single file, you know, all your district's files listed here, because if the type is federal, you know, and the year's 2022, and you go to W2 merge, and you select the submission type as federal, and you enter the year as 2022, it's going to merge more than one file together. So I'm just curious, like, is, is, and, and understand that like that's how you've always done it. Would it be easier to just merge them all together and send one file? Well, the district actually sends the file. Oh, okay. So if the district is sending their file, then you're not gonna use this um, program at all. Um, there is a configuration option. So let me go back into USPSR. So this is only going to be used if the ITC is submitting the district's information on their behalf. So if the district is submitting their information, then once I can get logged in here, so there's a configuration option. Oops, if I go to system configuration and I scroll down to W2 configuration, there's a checkbox here that says that the district will submit their own files. So if you check this box and then you make sure that, you know, that all this information is entered, when the district then goes to reports, W2 reports, W2 report and submission, when they create their submission file, this is going to be in the proper format for them to upload and submit their file to the Social Security Administration, to RITA, to CCA, then to the cities and the states on their okay, own. But, but, so, okay, but we, we submit their federal and we submit their uh, Ohio. And we okay. submit the 1099s and on, on their behalf. They submit their RITA and their um, city and their Indiana and Kentucky on their on their own behalf. So it's split. Okay. So So if we change that, we wouldn't want that for everything. Right. I think you're gonna have to you're gonna have to work together to create those files with that box checked for those that they're submitting on their own and then uncheck the box and then have them create the file, send the files to you for those that you're submitting on their behalf. Do you still not merge all of those together into one file for those that you're submitting for them? Or you do? Uh, no, the ones that we do, we do. Okay, okay. So I think that will work. So you're going to have to take a, just a couple, a different approach and a couple different steps. So if they're creating their own federal, for those files that they're creating on their own, make sure that that configuration box is checked. Okay, you're going to go to W2 configuration, check the box create those files that they're going to be, they're submitting on their own. 
uncheck the box after that part is done and then create the files, the other files that you're going to submit for them. And then you would follow the same process. They would send those to you, follow the same process that we talked about using the ITCM. Okay, so they just kind of have to flip back and forth dependent on what type of file it is. Yes, yes. So, you know, I would kind of do them as groups. So if there's files that they're creating and submitting on their own, you know, check that box on the configuration and create those and then uncheck the box, create the files that you're going to be submitting on their behalf. And then they would send those files to you. You would go through the merge process to get, you know, all of those files to read a CCA, so forth. Yeah, thank you. Okay. You're welcome. Does any, I'm just curious, does anybody else have, are they splitting it like that? Just so we kind of have, so we know how our questions are going to come in. Cause I don't know that we were aware that ITCs were submitting um, files that way. So that's helpful. We have to do it for <clears throat> when they have a city one, not Rita, but individual city. Sure. Okay. We have to do that. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay, good question. I that's helpful. Um, are there any other questions? Okay, I will follow up with the um, service bureau again. Uh, it does look like you know from the chat that most people um, have used self prepared in the past. Um, I'll get clarification on what you know the service bureau what that option. Um, should be used for and what it means. Um, and I'll get that to everybody so we can have that question answered. Are there any other questions, comments, concerns on anything that we talked about? Okay, Michelle, did you have anything else before we end today? Uh, yeah, I'll go ahead and share my screen just sure. one more time. Um, <clears throat> earlier when I was talking about <clears throat> those emails on how to get this set up, I just wanted to share those, excuse me, <clears throat> those emails again with you guys. Um, the one that Mark um, was talking about, um, you guys see my screen okay? Yes. Okay. Um, this was the one that Mark sent out on October 14th. And this is for those um, ITCs that are going to be hosting locally. Um, he had instructions on how to get it set up via the installation guide. And then um, if you're planning to, if you're hosting with the management council, Chad sent this message out on November 18th regarding the new VRA option. Um, called ITC management, and where you could go in and create your own instance um, test or production instance. And I believe um, one thing that uh, Chad noted is that um, the Duo install um, isn't available yet. He did in that email message talk about Active Directory and how to set that up. And then he made, uh, again, a note at the bottom again that he's working on Duo. And I haven't seen anything come out unless he just sent something to the ITCs regarding that. Um, but those are the two emails that I'm hoping will, you know, just kind of help you guys with that um, and allow you to, you know, get started on this if you haven't already. And like, you know, Lori and I both said, you know, um, it sounds like, you know, some of you will be doing, you know, specific things maybe um, to submit uh, specific uh, areas um, on behalf of your ITCs. But if you are an ITC that your districts are doing everything themselves, then you really, you know, don't have to be concerned about the ITC and application at this point. So do you guys have any other questions? Okay, well, um, we wanna thank you guys 
again uh, for attending today's session. This is the last one for the year. Um, so um, I know I had mentioned a couple weeks ago that we are going to be sending out a survey um, for training uh, topics for the new year. So hoping to get that out at the beginning of next week. And once we get the results then from the surveys that you filled out, uh, we will be creating um, a new registration page for calendar year uh, 23 um, with all of the various uh, sessions that we're going to be doing for the year. So if you guys don't have anything else, we want to uh, wish you guys a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Enjoy the time off and we'll see you guys next year.